these community features. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, members, for the opportunity to share some information with you tonight. I'll begin here in just a few minutes. I'll move out and share some slides with PowerPoint with you, but there's some comments I'd like to make first. So I'll start here. I have a lot of information to share tonight, but uh, I think it's important information, and I think it's information you need to hear. I hope it'll allow me to make a presentation, then I'll be happy to try and answer questions at the conclusion, or if necessary, get in additional information for you if a question arises that I can answer tonight. As you know, for over three years, we've dealt with a number of issues related to financial operations in the school district. These have included allegations of illegal spending by employees in the district, claims of poor oversight and fiscal management, multiple audits, reviews, investigations by the Office of the State Auditor, the SBI, and auditors the system has engaged. These allegations have been repeated in the course of political campaigns, reported and embellished in media and in blogs and other online media, and been retold in barbershops and beauty shops, such school classes, and other opportunities in our community. Tonight I want to share some information with you that may answer some of the questions that have been asked. And while I know that sharing this information will not satisfy some, I will not address every allegation that has been made specifically. I think it's important to set the record straight on some of the misinformation that has been widely broadcast. And so you may ask, why now, after all this time? There are several reasons. First, when the investigation being conducted by the SBI was initiated by the district attorney, I was told by their office that we need to stop our investigation, the one that we've been conducting, and allow the SBI to do their work. That was confirmed by our, your attorneys who talked with them. We were told to cooperate with the investigations, which we did, by giving them full access to the information and people that they requested. With the recent announcement by the district attorney that the SBI report was complete, and the announcement that the information will not be released to the public, discussing the information now should not jeopardize their work. The district attorney said, and I quote, in the case of the case in question, there's a considerable amount of unverified or unsubstantiated information that is based on hearsay. It is clear that that's the case, and I want to address some of that misinformation tonight. I'm doing so now because we've had the time to begin to further investigate some of the issues, to talk with appropriate staff within the district, and to draw some conclusions. And as a point of information, I will also to remind you tonight that I've received no report from any outside investigation. Second, Cleveland County Schools will soon name a new superintendent. The work of that individual should not be about this issue. We've spent a considerable amount of time and system resources over the past three years dealing with these investigations and countless public information requests about this information and with other matters related to this issue. Frankly, it's taken away from the important work that we should be doing for children. We've spent considerable resources in dealing with these issues and staff time and tying up our technology and business resources and in talking with you, other elected officials, responding to the media, and responding to unbelievably voluminous public information requests. This should not be a major focus of the new superintendent and other administrators, and it should not monopolize their time as it has done for many and many district staff over the past three years as we've been patiently waiting for all its investigations to be completed. Third, the reputations of many fine educators and school leaders have been harmed by this relentless stream of questions, accusations, and either intentional or unintentional misrepresentations and lies about many facts related to the purchases that have been made. Many people have had their character and their ethics questioned by those who have either not cared enough to get the facts correct or been able to understand the financial information that's been provided to numerous agencies, individuals, and media. Now, let me be clear, and I want you to hear me when I say this. There have been some times when our district could have been wise in spending money. I would say that was the case in all large organizations. Sometimes, even to me, as I look at these expenditures, they raise questions when I first look at them. But as I get the facts, understand the purpose for the expenditure, it's clear that they've been proper. The fact is, though, that sometimes, sometimes this even happens between my wife and I when we question a check, a subsequent entry in our checkbook. It's not always clear further information is needed about why the expenditure is made. The real work of our district concerns students, and we've been distracted from that purpose far too much for far too long. While some may disagree with some of the expenditures that have been made, I believe that they've been made in accordance with policy. They've been in support of the work we do with students. They've been to support our hardworking teachers and staff.
staff and in pursuit of the goals, mission, and expectations of this board in accomplishing the work we need to do. This board has reviewed the policies we have in place at previous meetings, and, you, and during those meetings and work sessions, you made clear that you expect our system to do some of these things that we do recognize and report our students and staff. At times, that work involves purchasing things to reward students for their accomplishments in academics, or through programs like PBS. It involves purchasing items to help boost employee morale and to support the work our teachers and those staff members are doing so that we do not lose them to other districts with higher supplements or to states like South Carolina and Tennessee with higher salaries for teachers. It involves sending our staff members, both teachers and administrators, teacher assistants, to meetings to learn about new programs and requirements. Attendance at those meetings involves costs and items like hotels and meals. Our work involves providing meals and staff development activities when it means we can get an extra hour of work or training done without taking a lunch break. It involves recognizing staff when they earn accomplishments like being named Teacher of the Year or comforting them when they have a tragedy or a loss in their families. It involves events to celebrate accomplishments like opening a new school. And most important, it involves providing recognition and support for the children at the school level. So what is the context? When the district was merged, it was decided to implement a purchasing card system. I was not here. I don't know the exact rationale, but it seems like it was a reasonable decision to make. I remember attending a meeting in December 2006, even before I became your superintendent, and hearing about the program and that we had over 200 cards in use. Let me point out that this is a practice used by many organizations, school districts, businesses, universities, and other organizations use P cards, as they are called, for a variety of reasons. Some of these reasons include that it's cheaper when you are purchasing smaller items to do it that way. Also, many transactions can only be made now with a car, such things like conference registration and hotel reservation. In other cases, we get a rebate for purchases made using the purchasing cards, so it increases revenue. And I'll speak more about that a little bit later. But regardless of the rationale, it was decided that the district would use a purchasing card process. Sometime, again, before I became superintendent, a process was established that included steps for making purchases. Those included receipts and documentation for purchases made, the issue of some purchase orders to pay bills, the use of logs to record the card expenditures, approval by account managers and supervisors, and review by the finance department before payment was made. Then the steps involved in issuing payment checks. Those steps take place tens of thousands of times per year. As a large organization with many business transactions taking place every day, we follow that process constantly. The process involves review of expenditures by multiple persons with different responsibilities in the process. At least three people in at least two departments, or in two departments or schools, review each purchase. And in some cases, that may be as many as five people reviewing that purchase. Over the course of the past two years, we've eliminated many cards. In some departments where every employee once had a card at the inception of the card program, now there are no cards. We have restricted the use of cards and reduced the number, and we've changed card vendors to one that allows us to have more restrictions on the use and more analysis of the expenditure. In making the changes we've made, we've talked with principals and tried to assess the real need for cards by schools for things like sending teachers to conferences, pay for training webinars, and other card-only transactions. With the reduction in cards, we've turned to a greater return to a greater reliance on purchase order and processes over the past two years. While that sometimes slows things down and requires more staff time and paperwork, it is more accountable. Several weeks ago, two of you met to review some of the documents that have been included in public records requests related to this issue. You communicated to me a list of 22 items that you thought looked suspicious and that needed more explanation, and asked that I look into these and give you a report. This evening, I want to do that. Some of these date back seven years, and some are within only the last two years. While I know these particular items will not answer every question, I think they illustrate the kind of expenditures and questions some of you have, and I think some of these, or similar expenditures, may have been misrepresented in, con represented in conversations in the community. 
tonight, I want to walk you through these expenditures and these items and make a few general comments about each one. I'll tell you at the outset, there are some that make me cringe and say, well, why did our folks make that purchase? Then when I review the information, they make more sense. I do think that these were all made for school systems rather than personal reasons. There's also one related to a purchase by a former employee that needs more investigation. And I'll point that one out to you in a few minutes when I get to that one. So, Mr. Chairman, at this time, I'd like to move out and ask.